So I went to my local bike shop, had a nice friendly chat with my local bike tech. He hooked me up. So anyways, I'm going to make some replacement parts and uh, when you can come along for the ride and watch a nice old 101 year old lathe make some parts. So, so I thought you might enjoy just seeing what it takes before you can actually apply power to this thing. There are 17 different places that this thing needs oil. going on is that a hydraulic force causes the center shaft to float on a layer of oil between the babbit and itself. Pull on there for good measure. So it's pretty quiet, just the clicking of the belt. Other than that, it's very quiet. So I'm gonna get some bolts and let's drill some holes. So I hope the sound comes out, but I have a, a really nice set of drills. And in fact, I just replaced them a couple of weeks back. Grizzly was running a special. And it's basically uh, quite a few drills with very small increments. And uh, so in this case, I'm drilling a 1 8 inch pilot hole through a two inch long bolt here. And then I'm gonna come back through again with a, I believe a 7 64th for the final hole size, and that'll basically just slightly make the hole bigger for a nice clean hole. This part's pretty boring, especially like this, it's just not that fast, but three. I'm making these parts out of stainless steel, so they won't rust. They are a little bit harder. This lathe was made before stainless steel, but if you just go slow and use lots of oil, it works just fine. When I bought this lathe, it had about 3,000s run out on the headstock. If you know much about lathes, which for an old girl like this is pretty good. So I've used it on and off for years to make projects. It's kind of one of those things that I take really good care of her, and she was pretty good. 
So now that I'm most of the way in with that length of bit, now I'm going to back this thing off and extend the drill bit all the way because I need to go through literally two inches. So it's going to have to be a little bit sticking out more than that. Here's another bolt so I know about how long to stick it out. Okay, just there. Okay. So you can see how far I have to go. Not terrible. The further you get a drill bit in, especially one this small, the faster it gunks up with metal. And on a lathe this slow and old, you can literally hear and feel when in the flutes on the drill are full of steel. It starts making kind of a weird popping noise. So I just, like I said, this thing eats oil to lubricate it. There's plenty of free oil laying all over the lathe. So every once in a while I squirt tapping fluid in, but for the most part I just mop up some oil from wherever I see it on the lathe and put it on the drill bit. <laughs> so what's funny about these old lathes is you constantly putting oil on them, but not one drop ever hits the ground, so no one can figure out where it's going. It doesn't burn. I think it just gets stuck to the metal shavings, which end up in the trash. I don't know. This is a uh, equivalent to a self-bend lathe. In fact, from a distance, you couldn't even tell them apart, I bet. Like I said, the only thing it didn't have was a belt tensioning handle, and I bought a really nice old one off eBay for a self bend and built some brackets out of angle iron and tapped some holes and now I have a belt tensioner. So when you're cutting threads you need a lot of force and these flat leather belts tend to slip sometimes so every once in a while I just need to dial up the force just a little bit more or for really really hard materials. Okay. Probably the last time here. I always say that, and then it's not. If you like unk up too much, then it'll the drill bit will break inside your piece, and now you've got a really nice hard piece of tool steel you'll never get out of the inside of a piece of steel. Plus, you wrecked your drill bit. So, like I said, these are my good drill bits. All right, now for my uh, final size. My highly calibrated screwed up part here will be a perfect gauge for my drill depth. Do do do. Good enough. I'm making this hole for the cable slightly smaller than the actual cable than the actual sheath itself and the reason for that is I'm trying to preserve as much meat on this bolt as possible. The reason I'm using a bolt rather than machining my own part is I don't know how to cut threads and I don't have any good dies at all for cutting threads and I don't feel like spending money on dies so I'm cheating by just using a to be that deep. Since the depth isn't really critical I'm just going to eyeball it. supposed to use these tail stocks is you just put gentle pressure and you see how it's stepping and still let the tool do the work. So 
you just put gentle pressure. I think that's good enough. And the last thing we always do, as Blondie would say, it's the only thing that separates us from the animals. So I've got my garage sale find really nice. Chamfer with replaceable edges, I believe. For nothing. So I'm just gonna put a real mild chamfer on this just so that no one gets their fingers cut. Looks great. We are all done. Now a good machinist would make this out of something that wasn't threaded and cut the thread so it'd be stronger. I don't feel like doing that and this works for me so. Looks good. It's pretty sort of mostly centered but uh, that'll do nicely. So I'm gonna make three or four more in case I lose them. And uh, since it's made out of stainless, it will not rust even with uh, whatever over the years. So I should be good to go. So here you can kind of see the end gears and you can change these gears out to change the speeds on the forward feed shaft here that pulls the saddle along. I believe that's what that's called, the saddle. Down here you can see the motor, which drives this counter shaft which then runs this. In the old days, you would probably see in factories that this pulley here being driven by an overhead belt, right? So, I just thought you might enjoy a look at this old girl. Good job.